everyone. It's 8.33 in the morning today. And uh, welcome all and thanks for attending to this in-service training on growing Doriar citrus. We have an excellent turnout this morning with the registrants representing virtually the whole state of Florida. And we believe this shows that this is an interesting topic for all. Uh, this training will cover all aspects related to growing citrus in the backyard, and also the initiative that UFIFAS is taking to make available some of the most promising selections of the UFIFAS citrus breeding program. We have several modules this morning that include presentations, and then we will have also time for questions and answers at the end of this of each presentation. Uh, please put those questions in the chat. I know uh, the pretesting in Qualtrics was sent to you yesterday and we will be sending the post testing hopefully this afternoon. Now uh, to start without further delay, first we have uh, Ruth Borger and Dr. Michael Rogers who will be taking uh, now the, the, the screen to talk a little bit more about this initiative. Thank you, Fernando. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ruth Borger. I'm the communication specialist at the UFIFAS Citrus Research and Education Center. And this morning, we are um, honored to have Dr. Michael Rogers, who is a professor of entomology, but also the center director for the Citrus Research and Education Center and statewide citrus leader to talk a little bit with us today. He's only with us for about 20, 25 minutes and then he has to jump off. So please put questions in the chat. Wendy Wilbur will be helping us um, monitor those. So let's just jump right in now. Um, Dr. Rogers, can you please give us um, a brief status of the citrus industry in Florida, but more importantly, where we are in our research agenda um, to support the industry. Yes, uh, thank you, Ruth. And uh, I think most everybody uh, on this uh, meeting today has probably got some background or familiarity with citrus greening. This is a disease that's been with us here in Florida since 2005. Um, and, and you're probably already aware, this is known as, as the worst disease worldwide of citrus. Um, because of the fact it's really difficult to manage. Um, symptoms are tough to manage. It's tough to manage the insect that spreads this. And when you look around the world at places that this disease has been before us, they've never really been able to control it. So uh, when you look back to when the citrus screening or HLB started in Florida, we really were starting from scratch with our management plans. Um, what we had from other countries was, um, you know, you need to remove infected trees when you find them, those diseased trees, control the psyllid, that's the insect that spreads the pathogen which causes citrus screening disease, and then also get our, our nursery trees under screen, you know, start, start off with clean nursery stock. And that was all we had to go on. And so if you look at where we were in 2005, and now where we are today, um, you, you know, citrus production has dropped considerably in the state of Florida. Um, prior to greening, we were at about 200 million boxes of, of fruit being produced a year. Uh, the forecast for this coming harvest season is down to 47 million boxes. So it is a big drop. We have, our industry has been hit hard. But the good news is, is that over this past decade or so that we've had the disease, our research programs, we have learned a lot about the disease, more than was known prior to it coming to uh, Florida. And now we've, we have learned, our growers are learning how we can live with HLB um, in the field. And a lot of that is based on the research uh, that has gone into things that, that have developed these short-term um, solutions, if you will, uh, for managing the disease. Things like improving or, or altering how we fertilize and water the trees to keep them, you know, feed them, feed the trees and water them. Uh, but as, as Fernando mentioned earlier, um, a big key also uh, for now and in the future are going to be some of the new varieties uh, that are coming out of the, the IFAS citrus plant breeding program that are more tolerant, that hold up better um, under the disease pressure. And we, we feel very confident those are going to be very important going forward in the future for our industry. Um, not only the management things that we've learned about how to care for the trees, but having these new varieties that can go out in the field. So these are just some of the short-term solutions um, that have been developed thus far that, that really kept the industry going. And, um, uh, and I think, you know, we're actually kind of turning a corner, if you will. There's, 
If you look in the field in our industry now, um, of all the trees that are planted um, in commercial groves, uh, I think one estimate I heard just last week was maybe up to 30% of the trees in the ground are new plantings that have not come into bearing yet. And so growers are committed to continuing to move the industry forward. And as we see those new trees come into bear to start to produce fruit, I think we're gonna see those yields start to go up. And, um, and so that's why I say, I think we're, we are turning a little bit of a corner for our industry. Um, but again, I think that, you know, we've, we've had a lot of success for the short-term research that gets us by for now until we have the long-term solutions, which are largely gonna rely on uh, new plant varieties coming out of our, our breeding program that are gonna be either more tolerant or possibly resistant um, in the future to HLB. Ruth, you're muted. You know, I, I wish I could learn that. Okay, so um, one of the things that I've always been impressed with working with the scientists and faculty and staff here and at all our citrus um, operations is the sense of optimism. Um, and it seems every day there's a reason not to be optimistic. But looking to the future and tapping into a couple of things you just said, I know that we have a very integrated um, grower management, grove management philosophy, but what are you most hopeful for and excited about in the future of citrus looking looking to the maybe to the long term future? Well, I think uh, probably the thing that gets me most excited is the advances, advancements that are being made in our breeding programs in terms of new varieties that are coming out. Um, and it, when you look at the history of, of we've got an excellent plant breeding program, it takes a long time to develop new varieties. We're going to hear more about that later on today. But when I look at the suite of, of new things coming out, not only juice oranges, but fresh fruit varieties, there's a lot of exciting stuff in the pipeline, a lot of it that does that holds up a lot better under HLB pressure than what we've had in the past. And not only do the, these new varieties hold up better under that pressure, they're also a lot better quality than what we've grown historically in Florida in terms of our juice oranges. But then also there's some really neat um, uh, fresh fruit varieties coming in the future. And uh, that's really going to give us some opportunities, both commercial and in, in dooryard situations to grow some really nice fresh fruit uh, that we historically have not been able to grow uh, for different reasons in Florida. So I, I personally am really excited about some of these new varieties that are on the horizon uh, that are coming soon. And that, that's what I'm most excited about. So you mentioned about the dooryard and uh, let's talk a little bit about this dooryard citrus, we're calling it an initiative. Um, for many years, we really haven't been paying or encouraging dooryard citrus. By that, I mean citrus in the home landscape. So can you talk a little bit about where we are now and what we have planned for? Yeah, and, and backing up, I, I would start by saying, um, you know, we really almost were at the point of kind of discouraging homeowners from planting citrus for the past 10 years or so. Um, it was really difficult for someone to expect to be able to go out and plant a tree in their, their backyard and have that tree survive. Um, really what you're doing is somebody would go out and spend 50 or $100 at a, at a nursery, plant the tree, and then it's going to die in a few years. And so we really discourage people from doing that because there's really just wasting your money. And the other point was that at, at that time, our industry was still trying to slow the spread of citrus greening. And, um, you know, we still, we didn't have all of our, all of our citrus groves were not infected with the disease at the time. And so having trees and dooryards scattered around the state also served as a reservoir for the pathogen. So we could actually, if you were close to a grove, you could actually have the disease coming into the grove from surrounding dooryards. So that was not a good thing for the industry as well. So not only would your trees not survive, but you're actually having a negative impact on the industry. But, but now, you know, our industry, all the, all the trees in the field are pretty much all infected with HLB. We're not as concerned about the spread anymore. We're now really focused on how to manage and keep those trees that we have in the field healthy and productive. And so, and as I mentioned earlier, we've come a long way in understanding how we can do that through better nutrition, uh, irrigation practices, and planting of some of these new varieties. And so now we're at a point, and the reason for this whole dooryard initiative is we feel really confident now that there's at least a few varieties we can recommend to homeowners along with practices that they can do that will that they can be successful growing citrus in the dooryard once again. Um, it's not something that um, you can plant and forget. It is gonna take some work and effort on the part of the, of the homeowner, 
but I know there's a lot of homeowners who are really dedicated, who love, really want to have citrus trees in their backyard, and they'll do what they can to take care of it. And so that's what we're here for. You know, I want to see uh, IFAS Extension really reach out to our homeowners around the state, provide the, the information and the education so we can start to see citrus trees in the dooryards once again. Because uh, that is our, our iconic, our symbol of Florida is the, everybody wants to move to Florida, put a, a citrus tree in the backyard. And I think we're at the point we can really start promoting that once again. So um, I want to give an opportunity for our participants to ask questions. So remember to put those questions in the chat box and we'll turn it over to questions in just a minute. But I would like, um, uh, Michael, for you to address um, something that we deal with all the time. I mean, everyone is desperate for a solution that is perhaps a cure. Um, for citrus greening in particular. I mean, but there's also citrus canker and there's lots of other um, diseases and bugs as you'll hear from doctors Dudney and, and um, Diepenbrock later on. But so can you give us some counsel as to how, especially within IFAS extension and our, because people are gonna go ask our agents and ask our faculty, you know, I've heard about peptides. I've heard about this, I've heard about this. What can we say when these things that come across and they're presented in the media, especially as, oh, we have a new cure. Any advice to, for us on how to respond when people ask us about those things? Well, um, yeah, you're going to hear a lot of things that that come up in the media that that are really a lot of times overblown or premature. Um, it happens all the time, even to things that I say in the media, <laughs> you know, get blown <laughs> out of proportion every day. Um, but, you know, I think right now the main thing is for our, our agents uh, to stay in tune with what we're doing. Um, seek our, you know, reach out to us with questions that you have. Most of the things like peptides and things like that, you know, that's never going to be something for a homeowner to really, you know, consider. Um, and, and they really shouldn't have to, because I think that when they, if they plant the right varieties in the home landscape and they do a good job of caring for the trees, trying just to, to give the trees what they need, nutrition and irrigation wise, uh, they'll be fine. And it really, we wouldn't be doing this if it was something that was going to take a lot of, I mean, a lot more effort and technology than a homeowner has available to them. So, um, but again, I think, you know, you're, you'll hear lots of things that are being talked about, but really a lot of those things are, are geared more towards commercial groves where you have growers with hundreds, if not thousands of acres uh, trying to make a living. It's a different situation with a single tree in the dooryard. Um, I really don't think, think pesticides are really all going to be that, that critical anymore in terms of psyllid management in the dooryard. Um, and Dr. Diepenbrock will talk a little bit later on about there are pests that do need to be managed, um, but it's not going to be, for most intents and purposes, the same level of management that, that you would see a commercial citrus grower doing. Great. So let's turn it over to some questions. I mean, Wendy, I know you always have a good question to ask Dr. Rogers, but are there other questions that people across the state might have? Right, now's your opportunity. We have a very quiet group. <laughs> Michael, so while we're waiting for any questions, um, could you comment a little bit about what type of um, support we get? I know that we have a number of funding support, but I know we get a lot of grower support. Um, can you just talk about how important that is to our program? Yes, um, we've been uh, fortunate to get funding from a number of sources over the, the since HLB arrived in Florida. Uh, the original source of funding that we really had was came from uh, grower funding through the box tax, um, where, where commercial citrus growers tax themselves on the boxes of citrus produced each year, and that came some of that came to research, some goes to marketing, um, and so that really got the ball, ball rolling on HLB research funding, and then over time we saw um, uh, at the federal level. Um, the USDA get involved and start providing funding for research. And that's been a really big driver for a lot of our research, especially long-term research programs that are going on are funded by the federal government, the USDA. Um, and there's also state funding that comes down. Um, some of the state funding goes through the, to the uh, Citrus Research and Development Foundation. And then part of it, uh, they fund, they, in, the C, in the CRDF funds research, not only at IFAS, but um, at other places around the country and even probably outside of the country as well. 
Um, and then we also get legislative support that comes directly to IFAS. And that, that's really important for us because that's, that's kind of been the constant for us. Um, it's not enough to run all of our programs by any means, but um, we do see some money that comes from the state legislature directly to IFAS for citrus research on HLB. And that's really, we've, we've leveraged that to get a lot of projects rolling and then later on get more, use that, that, that funding to secure federal funds down the road. So, yeah. We do so we have, do, we go do ahead, have a Wendy. question in the, um, in the question and answer box, uh, Dr. Rogers. Um, one is uh, to clarify, are the recommendations for citrus for homeowners for all counties, even counties with high citrus production? Okay, um, I'm not sure, I, okay. I'm so are, are we encouraging homeowners, um, not encouraging, are we supporting homeowners in their backyard citrus production, even in counties that have a, a commercially important um, citrus yes. industry? Yes. Okay, yes, we are. And, um, and as I think you'll hear more today, uh, the varieties that we're going to be talking about, some of the new varieties coming out, um, we think will hold up much better um, under the, the, the intense um, HLB pressure. Um, and otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this because we're not going to uh, recommend people go out and plant citrus and then have it die. Um, there's, there's HLB pressure all over the state. Um, and, you know, again, where we are now, and you'll hear more about this, is we think people can be successful growing um, citrus in the dooryard, regardless of where you are in the state. Great. I think and a big part of that, too, if I can interrupt, is that we were very careful in, in moving forward, and we've talked to um, citrus nurseries, and we've been talking with the industry to make sure that there are, that they understand what we're doing here. This is not a competition. Um, and, and we've been very careful to be conscious of stakeholders here as well. So I think there's another question, Wendy. Yeah, some um, other questions. from uh, Cesar Peralta over on, uh, in the Southwest area, um, heard about Honey Bell or Sugar Bell, and he's not sure what the name is, being, um, being HLB. He said resistant. I don't think that's the word that we use, but I think that there's a lot of excitement about the Sugar Bell. So Dr. Rogers, you want to chat on that? And I'm probably going to just punt on this one because I think you're going to hear a lot more about Sugar Bell from uh, Fred and Jude. Uh, you can see Dr. Committers looks like a Sugar Bell maybe in the background of right behind him right there. So uh, I'm not going to talk more about that right now because I know they'll do a good job of covering that. But that is definitely one to be on the lookout for and, you know, for, for the dooryard. Okay. And then from Yvonne, um, wondering about the oak leaf extract. Um, and uh, oak leaves as mulch is trying to, um, to improve the conditions so HLB doesn't get so um, out of control. Is there a solution? Or are they trying to isolate the compound for that? What kind of research is going on about that? There is some work going on um, at the USDA and IFAS uh, labs over on the East Coast. Um, I'm not sure at this point that this is something for homeowners necessarily. Um, Okay. And I don't know if, if maybe Megan or somebody will talk about that a little bit later on who've, who've been following that research a little more closely. Um, but I, what I will say is, I mean, really, uh, in a lot of cases like that, you're talking about these are mulches and, you know, you're increasing organic matter in the soil. Um, I think there may be something that is in those oak extracts, what I'm hearing. Um, but again, uh, maybe Megan can make some more comments later on about her experience and knowledge on that because... Um, I'm not sure what to tell you right now. Right. I, I guess we don't have a recommendation at this point in time. I'll say that. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. Right. And a, a question uh, for me, and um, I'm wondering, you know, as we evolve with these homeowner recommendations, you know, I just, they, we're going to be updating them constantly as the new research comes in. I know that we'll have fact sheets, but um, there is a pretty good resource of a website, correct? Uh, yes, we've got um, websites that has some of uh, updates on the research. I think we'll be working on a website later on that'll be more geared towards homeowners and a lot, a lot of information uh, directed specifically to homeowners. Right. And so stay tuned for that. Great. Okay. Just I think that put wraps up some... my 
our questions here. Yeah, I, I just want to say I just put something in the chat about citrusresearch.ifis.ufl.edu. Um, and we can announce something that I know Dr. Diepenbrock is and a number of our faculty is, but stay tuned. You know, there's some good things happening, especially on the homeowner front. Um, and also, if you do not subscribe to our statewide newsletter, um, you can do that by going on that citrus research site and signing up for that or just email me directly and I'll add you to that statewide newsletter. I put information in there, the latest news, latest research news, etc. But we're really working hard, especially through Wendy, um, to have a direct pipeline and get this information out. We really are a collective and we need to be saying the correct information out there. A lot of the other questions in the chat I know will be addressed by um, the follow the presenters coming up. Michael, I know you need to go. Any last words? Um, no, I just I thank everybody for joining us today for the, the SIN service training and hopefully it'll be a good use of your time. And uh, again, um, make sure you ask questions of the folks today that are speaking. And, um, and again, you can reach out to us later on if you have more questions and more follow up that we can help with. So thank you all for, for letting me speak for a few minutes and I've got to jump off to another meeting. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Fernando, back to you.